Good morning, church. Today is Wednesday, March 25th, and we are again facing these amazing times. It occurs to me that we may be entering into a new f phase of this isolation that we're experiencing, and I believe it calls for us to respond in some particular ways. The new is beginning to wear off. The novelty of the situation is going to get really old really fast. And we're not certain how long this is going to last, if it's going to be a few more days, if it's going to be a few weeks. Some indicate that it might be even longer than that, but I, I doubt that. But we really don't know at this point. And the reality is also there that the numbers that we see being displayed for the active cases in the United States and in Oklahoma is probably going to spike in the next few days not necessarily because there are more cases but because there are more tests being run you may have friends already who are displaying symptoms of this virus I know I do in different parts of the state and we need to be aware of the fact that those numbers may spike and we know that the media is going to make a really big deal out of all of this they're going to want it to be uh, just a doomsday scenario that scares everybody, and we don't have to go down that path. Um, the numbers are going to, if you listen to CNN, they're going to make it sound like it's the end of the world. And actually, we have an answer to the end of the world thing, too, but they don't know about that. So, um, But we're also facing the fact that our aloneness is starting to set in fact is we just miss being together. It's been 10 days since we as a congregation have gotten together and we're going to feel that more and more. We are a hugging and handshaking family and when we are not together we miss that. Truth is I really desperately already miss the church because it's always good when we're together. But here we are. Add to all of this, we had a conversation here in the office this morning and we're just kind of sadded out. I think that's a new word. But we've had so much sorrow. Our congregation has been with two families in the last few days who have suffered terrible loss. And there's just a lot of sad things going on in the world. Now, these problems, all of these problems, are being experienced by the majority of the world right now. But we as Christians have an answer. And we do not have to be dragged down into the depths of depression, as many, I'm afraid, might do. We have an answer because we now have an opportunity to rise up and to be encouraging to others. Let me just say very clearly, this will pass. We don't know, again, how long this is going to be. We may have some days to go, but this will pass. There is a song in our songbooks that we enjoy singing because it has a great beat, a great tune to it. Let me read you some of these words. The song is, Jesus is coming soon. Troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now is at stake. Does that sound familiar? That song was written in 1942, right at the very beginning of World War II. And there must have been a feeling at that point that the whole world was collapsing and that we were certainly in danger. Well, we got through that. We, as the American people, rose up in a very strong way. And I believe we are going to do the same thing now. But all the more, we as Christians have an opportunity to rise up. And here's why. First of all, we still have fellowship. 1 John chapter 1 says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And that's still true. That fellowship is not dependent on our presence with each other. That was written to people who were apart and who might not ever even actually meet. But they were brethren in Christ. We still have our fellowship. It's not dependent on us having to be in each other's presence. And so we enjoy that fellowship. 
the deepest core beliefs that we have as Christians still unite us. And we still have the opportunity to communicate with each other. We can use the telephone, we can use the internet, we can do all sorts of things that bring us into a, a communication with each other in which we can be encouraging. So that fellowship is still strong and maybe more appreciated than ever. Secondly, we have faith. The 11th chapter of Hebrews tells, it gives us a list of, of great stories of what people accomplished because they had faith. Stories of people living and, and practicing faith in very difficult times under very difficult circumstances. Stories of faith that motivate us now. Stories of faith that carry us through hard times. And that faith that they had is still our faith today. We may be experiencing that faith in a whole new way, but this is good for us. Our faith is real, and our faith is enduring, and our faith is conquering. Third thing, we have better things to think about. If the whole world wants to simply be focused on the very negative things that are going on, and the honestly, the frightful things that are going on, we do not have to dwell there. Romans 12 talks about the fact that as we became Christians, our minds are renewed. Our minds are certainly renewed. In 1 Corinthians, there is a, a passage that says we take every thought captive. Certainly everything that we think about as, as, as Christians, as disciples of Jesus, is put into this column of us trusting him completely. And every thought that we have is taken captive by Christ. And then finally, in Philippians chapter 4, there's a, a wonderful passage. Let me read you this. Verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. King James says, think on these things. This is what we are called to do. This is what we are called to be. When we were each baptized into Christ, we were stepping out of an old life and into a new. We were voluntarily stepping into a life controlled by Him, willing to do things useful to Him. We would never have dreamed of all this. But here we are. And Christians, today, I want to say rejoice. And again I say rejoice. We are the church. We are Christians. We walk with Him and we walk with one another. We are His people at such a time as this. I hope you're going to have a great day. Bye.